Hello, my name is Paul. I'm a visitor here at the BMR studio. And, and you are a German guy, no? Yes, I'm a German guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's a German guy uh, and he visited uh, me from the YouTube, from the real home recording. Uh, yes, I saw a video with you at the real home recording and, and also your channel. Here yeah, you I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> 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 Today I have a piece with me. What you build? Or what yes, what I have built. It's a headphone amplifier because uh, my audio interface, uh, the headphone amplifier inside it what was for me not good enough. Mm -hmm. And therefore I built a better one, uh, find a, a relative cheap solution from Zeostrom Audio. It's a... Zeostrom? Yeah, I think it's... Zeostrom, okay, the, the link will be here somewhere, guys. <laughs> okay. So we will put the link here. I bought his PCB and ordered uh, all the parts myself and built this unit together then. And I am quite, I was quite impressed. It's much better than the headphone amplifier inside the audio interface. Uh, as I see, here something is missing. Yes, so volume is... potentiometer. So there's no volume control. Uh, I want to keep the signal to noise ratio as low as possible and therefore I leave it out and I do this uh, volume control with my audio interface after the conversion. Uh, what is your uh, interface? It's uh, RME Fireface 800. Ah, the RME Fireface yes. 800. Ah, it's a nice piece of gears. And what I really like about this, this is the back. Tell me, what, what's going on here? Yes, I wanted to build a quite small unit and to have a built-in power supply, so you connect only the mains here, and you have here just normal audio connectors, not balanced. So, so you can use it also with your hi-fi equipment. Ah. But I want so to build an asymmetrical, so balanced one later. So guys, uh, this headphone amplifier, I'm telling you, it's really it's heavy and rigid, and uh, it even looks. Uh, Nice in this case. So let uh, let him to open, but uh, it's kind of beefy. You can build for uh, too it's smaller. No, because it's if you see it, this wow. is the PCB here. It's the smallest wow. case possible. Maybe that's to, clean. Maybe to save on the high a bit. Uh huh. Plus minus 12 volts. Yes. This is the solution two transformers, so one for the positive, one, one for, the, for neg the negative, and uh, uh, after the positive and the negative is connected together, and this is how he get the null. Very nice one. And as I see here, you can fix uh, here much more bigger capacitors yes, if you yes. want, but actually, I think this cap is. From Nichicon, it's no, it's, one. it's Panasonic. F Panasonic, C. yeah, but the, the 105 uh, uh, Celsius rated, no? Yes, yes. Yeah, you can see there it's uh, for the rated for 105 Celsius. Tell me about that. Uh, I see here a really nice fuse in some kind of uh, plastic yes. protection it's case. The fuse on the primary side, and this looks like uh -huh. a varisto to save from. To high voltage. Ah, okay. Nice. And then, and then you have the, your capacitors here, the diodes. Bridge. So this is the diode bridge over there. And here you uh, have maybe like this we can see everything. Yeah. Here you have all the voltage regulators. Uh huh. So this is for one channel. And this is for the other channel. Each channel have its have its own. Uh, regulator on a positive and on a negative yes, side yes. also very nice very clever and then uh, this is your uh, power cap for the for the headphone output this this is german cable no it's mogami it's from japanese oh look at this oh fuck mogami cable patented Pattern number, what is the pattern number? 25, 24, low noise wire. Oh, it's really, it's beefy. It's, it's a, a microphone uh, wire, uh -huh. but uh, I, want, um, I wanted to keep this compact, so I had to build this uh, inputs here on the back side, 
and I wanted to use a good shielded cable because of this here, of the transformers, mm -hmm. so I don't have any hum mm -hmm. from, uh, the, that I keep from the transformers. Yeah, and uh, actually I like this uh, coupling capacitor here. This is some kind of ceramic. Uh, looks to me. Yeah, it's bipolar ceramic, shalala. Very nice one. So, tell me, where is the yeah. amplifier? The amplifier, so you have here two input OPMs from analog devices. I don't see the number. It's quite so small. So this is definitely, so this two small black puppy is kind of op-amp to drive from the input, the, the input of the headphone amp, which is that. Yes, this is uh -huh. a chip uh, from Texas Instruments. Yeah, it's a TPA 6120A2. So this is the latest version from yes, the, it's the latest version. Yeah, it's the latest version from the Texas Instruments. And, and if you guys want to know about this chip, it's a very popular chip for uh, for headphone amplifier because it has an incredible, incredible uh, nice numbers on, on, on performance and also on, on distortion and on the noise. Everything, what you see here, guys, is everything absolutely symmetrical from this point to the end. Yes, so, yes. kind of beautiful design. I really like it. The only difficult part to build is, uh, is the SMG components. So, doing this by hand is quite difficult. Uh -huh. So, you didn't apply the oven for it? No, no. So, uh, no oven. So, this you did uh, one by one, part by yes, one? Yes, yes, part by part. And uh, with your hand, with this yes. uh, hot air. Hot air. Uh, tell me about what is this two jumper here? I can see here some jumper. Let me guys zoom in a bit. These jumpers are for the output impedance. So there's something like, uh, I think, 10 ohm and 120. I don't know the correct numbers. But, uh, so you choose. Uh, is the minimal. So yeah, is the, the minimal, minimal 10? Yes, yeah. Okay. I so if it. you have a headphone amplifier with very high impedance, so you can choose the higher one. And if you use uh, something like... A headphone, uh, you, you mean? Yeah, the headphones. So probably this is also good for driving uh, studio headphones. Yes, with higher impedance. No, I cannot spell it. You can spell it? You are German. Sjöström. <laughs> Göteborg and Sweden. Ah, so, okay, now I get it. So this panel and this design is made by this guy, this... Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay, and, and then and you build it with your hand. Yes, you can buy this PCB from his uh, web store uh -huh. and build it, but you have to order all the parts yourself, so it's not a kit, it's just a plain PCB. So he just selling only the PCB and the design, let's say. Yes, you will get a schematic and all the documentation for it. Ah, I got it. First, I think this is what you... No, you have other project, no? It's yes, some... yes, yes. I have other project which I designed myself. Ah, but so this, this is... One. <laughs> so not this one, but you really like the result of, yes. of this headphone amplifier. I built this many years ago, so I forgot uh, the details, uh -huh. uh, but it's working <laughs> quite good. And I'm, I'm quite happy with the results of this headphone amplifier. So actually, this is what you are using for mixing uh, songs and also listen. Yes. Songs yes. at your home. Yes, yes. Very nice. It's Very my nice. main headphone amplifier. You pay for the PCB. I think it's 300 uh, Sweden krones. Also, it's about 31 euro. It's nothing. And you pay some something for the postage. But I think I paid the whole with the case, all the parts. Uh, uh, these are very high quality parts, about 110 euro. Together, total. Yes, total. So guys, for 110 euro, you guys can get an absolutely gorgeous headphone amplifier, which can drive 1.5 watt on an output in a really clean and really crisp way and method. And you can choose different uh, impedance for your uh, headphones for 110. This is what you can get. And you have to build yourself with all the SMD working. I hate SMD. You hate SMD also? No. Oh. With Sortia, it's very easy. It's easy? Yes. And, okay. And, 
and it's fast because you can also uh, solder many components at the same time. So you place like 10 components and then you start with one by one. So when they ah. are placed on, this, on the soldering paste, so I solder them like with hot air here, then here, then here, and, and so on. Until you have to repair something. Uh, repairing this, uh, I think it's also better than uh, if you have through whole components and uh, if they are soldered on the both sides. Uh -huh. So uh, for me personally, it's uh, difficult. To yeah, because you don't have this. Yes, I don't have this unit. <laughs> <laughs> but I have. <laughs> so it's very difficult. And with hot air, I just apply the hot air on the component and take with another tool, it's uh, get apart and so on. For comparison, mm -hmm. I will bring here something else from the high-end market. Yes. Okay. And we uh, can compare it. Then. Uh, let's say we can compare. By the way, the, the two headphone amplifiers is not fully compa comparable because it's really not fair. The other mm -hmm. one is really one of the most highest high-end uh, headphone on the market. I don't know why. So, guys, this is my headphone amplifier. But I bought for one of my new projects to try out something. Actually, I don't remember for the for the price, the original price of this one. It doesn't matter. I will check the price and the website and the link and the price. It will be here on YouTube. So this is definitely not a cheap headphone amplifier. But what you can get with that, let's open it. By the way, I use it for five minutes. So guys, this is when the money shot is coming. Welcome to the world of high end when you are using the product only for five minutes. First issue. We have a wall watt. Yeah, okay, let's say this one is not crap. It's actually, you guys can see here, this one, no, focus your fuck. So this one is a UL listed uh, adapter, main adapter. And here is the headphone amplifier. It have a pot meter, of <laughs> yeah. course. This is made for a high-end market. Yeah. They don't have pot meters on nothing. You know that? Just on our preamp. Balanced, unbalanced input. Balanced input again. This is where your uh, power cable is coming here inside. You see, guys? It's better than 2015 in March. So I'm almost uh, ordered immediately. Power switch? Yeah, I don't see here power switch on your one. Yeah, I don't need one. <laughs> you don't need, okay. So then this is your normal small headphone jack and this is your big balanced headphone jack. First question for this musical fidelity company. Okay, where is my professional? Big, big jack. Big jack for three uh, 6.3 millimeter. So I have to use an adapter. Use an adapter if I have a professional uh, headphone. But the case itself, it's. I think it's okay, no? Yeah. The case is really nice, and uh, all metal case. Everything is metal. This one, uh, yeah, this is also metal. Uh, okay, le let's see what is inside in this. Uh, so we managed out this uh, high-end uh, headphone amplifier from his own box and for that we have to use Hexa, Philips, other Hexa, I don't know. As you see, there is no two screw, which is, <laughs> which is the same. And each one is on a, also on a different size, so it's really not easy to manage out from the case, but compare the two design. Nice. Only one main component and a couple of really passives and that's it, actually. And you don't forget, you also get the power inside. Inside the unit. Compared to this to here. First of all, they are running on 12 volt... What is this? Adapter, yeah? Okay. Then from the 10 volt, with some choke, shalala, they are doing a uh, 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 operational inverted. voltage, so they are using inside, where is the amplifier, they are using some kind of high frequency, common choke, choke, whatever, uh, inverter. 
Yeah, it's kind of nice design, but it's not fully symmetrical as you can see here, but it can handle, don't forget, it also can handle balance signals and unbalance signals also in the input and also on the output. And, and uh, here I'm really disappointed with those guys, really. Look, they're using, uh, for the volume controller, the one of the most common of the shelf pot meter with with this really, really cheap Chinese Molex kind of connector with open wires. I don't know why they not use the ERK27 from the Alps. This one is the balanced output and this one is the unbalanced output. And we did a measurement here and guys, look, this headphone amplifier, it's unbelievable on how it's handling the signal and the impedance and everything. They're using four piece of really heavy uh, transistor to drive the balanced headphones. For example, the Bayer Dynamic DT 1770 or 1990. Uh, now they came out to the market with a really nice uh, balanced headphone. So this is your left channel, yeah, and this is your right channel, this cable. In that case, one, two, three, four transistor is working on your headphone. Let's have a look what's happened when you are using normal uh, street headphones with unbalanced input. Now the difference is so huge because this one one end, the negative end, is connected to the ground. Here you can see. So this one is connected to the ground plate. This is the ground plate here. And the other two is just running here. And I believe me, guys, we did a track back. It's like kind of reverse engineering. And the signal is just coming only from one capacitor to the headphone. So this is what I realized. When I plugged here a normal unbalanced headphone to here, it's so weak. I cannot I even, I even hate it. It's so weak. It cannot drive my professional headphones with this output. It's really like... <laughs> of course, if you are using a balanced headphone, you will get all the power from all these four transistors and all, all of this shit because on an unbalanced mode you just get, you have to forego this part. On an unbalanced configuration is just running this. So this is really weird how they handle it. I don't know why they not came with some kind of uh, other design, with some kind of switch here even to make sure when you are using unbalanced uh, headphones you have a possibility here to switch the, to unbalanced and then somehow manage all this amplifier circuit to change the circuit a bit to make sure all your four transistor is driving the output not just two or even one I know I have clue so definitely on the design <coughs> it's a kind of nice headphone amplifier but for 400 euro with the uh, outside uh, 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 power source, yeah, with cheapest conductive plastic, uh, small, and this is really small, believe me, this is really small. Pot meter and uh, all this construct, no, definitely not. So, high end market, die market. And if you ask me what I like much more, mm, <laughs> this. And I'm sure this can really drive 1.5 watt instead of 0 0.75. And I don't know why they not did much more stronger, like even two options like high fidelity and high power. Because this four transistor even can drive my car. Believe me guys, this, this transistor <laughs> is huge. And also how they're driving, it's a lot of electronics and really huge technologies packed here. And uh, actually the whole amplifier part is totally discreet. So there is no open, no ice, is nothing. Everything just transistors and, and capacitors and resistors. 
Only the input driving is, I think, because of the balanced and the unbalanced input. Definitely, I'm not fully understand this headphone amplifier. And if you ask me, 400 euro for this with, of course, with some nice box. Yeah, okay, with some user manual. Something missing from here. If we immediately jump to the technical details, yeah, uh, about uh, this uh, power issue, because I'm telling you guys, this is really weak. So we jumped immediately to here to find what's the difference between the balanced output and between the unbalanced output, and there is no one line about it, nothing. They are not telling you the truth. The power is bigger than 0.75 watt per channel into really important, yeah, 32 ohm headphones per channel. So, what a freak. What is mean output devices 24 per channel? What is mean? 24 headphones. <laughs> 24 headphones you can attach with 32 ohm. What? Output devices 24 per channel. Hmm. In parallel. In parallel. What? <laughs> so then, 32 ohm is came to one ohm, one and a half, something like this, per channel. Output impedance 22 ohm, suitable for 10 to 600 headphones. No, guys, I have 400 ohm headphone, no result. I have 250 ohm uh, headphone. No good result. I have 150 ohm, and this is my lowest impedance in my studio with the studio headphones. No good result. This is cannot drive a professional headphone on the unbalanced. On the balance, I now have clue. Soon I will get my new Bayer Dynamic uh, 1900 or what the fuck this number? I don't oh, know. Okay, <laughs> DT199900 <laughs> headphone. And then I really can compare this one to the die. So is the difference, really guys, really, I know I get really angry on the high-end world. Even on the die world, you have a possibility, even with the freaky jumper, to choose the output impedance is high or low. Here is not a case. The moment of the truth, it will come now, and I hope you guys even can pick up by a microphone how much we care the high-end 400, 400 euro high-end headphone amp compared to the diver. What we are doing now, this one, of course, because it's not contain volume controller, it's on full power. Yes. So then we manage this one also on a full power. And guys, you have to trust on me, really. Now I'm asking you guys to trust on me because you guys cannot hear really the differences between the two. Only I can hear it with this Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pro headphone. You see here, maybe focus you. Okay. So for, but first we have to measure the impedance of this uh, headphone. So it's 257 ohm on one side and uh, the one other side is 254.8 ohm on the other side. So definitely this headphone is not home headphone. This is a professional level of headphone with really high impedance, let's say middle high impedance. So it's not this crazy high like one of my other one, which is running on 400 ohm. So at the moment we placed into this CD player. By the way, this is a really nice Sony CD player from the old uh, uh, 90s, I think. And it's have this really incredible uh, pot here or rotation switch to choose different kind of dithering on the sound. It's really, really nice sounding CD. I really like it. it this is my lab CD player and this is what I'm using to test any kind of amplifier and any kind of tape recorder because it has a really nice sound. Now at the moment we placed inside uh, this CD. I got from her on one of the gig what she did here in Berlin on a 
colleague Yum Hangericum. She is amazing. She is doing the music alone. Everything she is doing a mixing. She is writing the music. She is playing on a piano and everything. So and recording is, and recording everything. So she is doing everything alone. And she is, as you see, she is a really beautiful girl. I have with her a really nice uh, gig in this Collegium Hungaricum. So this is the CD what we are using now. So let's uh, compare just really a volume difference between the two. So let's play. Go back to the beginning, I hope. Let, I, I will put uh, the headphone to my... I hear already it's really powerful and I, I and I feel the bass. Let me put on my head the headphone. Nice. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I'm telling you, the bottom end, uh, the bottom end, is really open and deep. The highs, really precise, absolutely precise, absolutely matching. I'm really like. So, thumbs up for this uh, the DIY headphone amplifier so let's know again uh, so again so show me so again what I do for you guys to hear what the different I just placing here yeah so this is the power of the headphone with this 250 ohm headphone of the DIY headphone amplifier so let's switch now to the other one the input RCA, yeah, there is a switch you guys see, so I switch to the RCA input and then on a full power, I didn't touch it and let's play. You need to plug it in. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is now the hard time is coming because with that, of course, I have to do like this. Okay, plug. Okay, maximum, and let me show you. Much quieter. Much more quieter. It's like half of the power, like even not half, like quarter. Okay, let's put to my head. Okay, maybe because of the missing power, so because of the really low power. I'm telling you guys, a huge difference between the two. I really have a feeling like uh, I'm driving this headphone with some kind of really low level of uh, Walkman or I know a yeah, group. M MP3 player. <laughs> yeah, on, on, a, on a high, so on, on, on a high frequencies, uh, this headphone amplifier it's uh, it's much more precise and much more opened. So the space and uh, the position of, of the high frequencies is much more cleaner. But something is missing on the bottom. I think because of the the power, it cannot. You know, it cannot drive this. So again, it's much more quieter. You see on the on the metering, no? It's really yeah. And okay, I can hear myself. You can speak to me. I can hear everything. With the other one, I cannot nothing. Okay, again, put it back. Somehow I can manage this. So this is the show them. This is the max power. Okay, and we go back to the beginning of the song. Sambo. Good. Oh. 
Okay, and now we switch to the other one. Right. Left. Take out. Yeah, really not professional. Quick. Wow. Powerful. It's four times more power, I think. Yeah, I... <laughs> oh, really nice. I want to hear other track from this girl. It's the track of uh, Beautiful. You have to listen to this because okay, this song, okay. this song is contains some kind of really weird, really heavy bass on the beginning. So yes, why? Right. Yeah, and you have to listen to it. So, well, <laughs> it's woo. Very like deep, boom. <laughs> it's really deep. So again, go back to the high end. Yeah. I really. Come on, guys. 3.5 millimeter jack on a high end. No, please, no. One, two, and back. Too quiet. Too quiet. The bass is here, but it's nah, too quiet. <laughs> so, sorry guys for this not too scientific test, <laughs> but definitely the Texas Instruments did an excellent job with this IC. And I think these guys did a big mistake because they plugged inside so much power with eight transistor and uh, driver transistors and everything and line driver even, or whatever, and balanced input, but they did a really big mistake. This headphone amplifier cannot drive properly, meaning properly, even this cannot drive properly, I hear it. But this one cannot drive properly the professional level of headphones, just for the judging. You see, guys, this CD player also contains a headphone amplifier. So let's try and know this one, with Sony CD player, direct. I would say it's a bit louder than this, but quieter than this. So, uh, the, <laughs> this is a really joke. So, even the Sony CD player, which has a built-in headphone amplifier, is louder than this, but quieter than the DIY uh, pole. M1, or what is this name? It's QRV09. QRV09, so this is QRV09, this is, I don't know, V90VHA, and this is my crusty old Sony, <laughs> 20 year old <laughs> CD player. Give me, yeah. give me, give me, give me, give me. So I also want to listen. So let's jump back to the beginning of the song. It's definitely more powerful than the high-end. Uh, and you know what, guys? I'm kind of uh, high-end idiot, so I'm kind of sound idiot. If I have to judge between these three solutions, so if I'm going into the shop, first what I will choose is the DIY. And then what I will choose is the Sony CD. And then what I will choose is this one. Because of the power. If I have to choose on really on like everything together, like quality, 
price and everything, then my first choice is the DIY, then my second choice is the high-end uh, headphone amplifier, this V90BAJ, and then this is my last one, because definitely there is a huge difference on, on quality. This is outperform this one and this one on a, on a, on a high frequencies and on, on a separation. So it's have a really nice uh, separated left and right, so it's really minimized the cross uh, talking between the two. <laughs> this one is really precise on a bottom end, unbelievable clear on, on the bottom, uh, on the low frequencies and also on the mid frequencies. But somehow this old Sony 20 year old old CD player and I, I think why because of course this headphone amplifier is connected directly into the uh, into the uh, converter immediately so <coughs> this is give let's say almost the best listening experiments on a, on a mid frequencies on a low it's kind of weak on a high end it's absolutely garbage but on the middle it's crystal clear and uh, you have a feeling you you're listening directly from the cd and your air is running on a cd <laughs> so yeah uh, guys i'm really disappointed with this uh, high-end uh, musical fidelity uh, headphone amplifier maybe and this is what we talk here uh, when when we when we put them together uh, yeah, actually the PCB and the design, this with 8 uh, transistor, it's nice, it's really nice design, it's really, uh, it's really designed well. But they did this big mistake with the unbalanced output, so, um, yeah, it's worst of the money, I think. Kind of clear sound, what you will get. But we definitely we have to uh, drive the headphone with the balanced output, and then later on, guys, uh, on a, on a couple of weeks later, when I will get my new uh, Bayer Dynamic balanced headphone, I can try out again because I'm 100% sure if we get all the transistors is working on a, on a balanced output, it will outperform this one. Even oh, this is my guessing, but at the moment I'm telling you guys. And really, like oh, for 110 euro, yeah, total, something about and it, it, plus fun, so fun to build. Yes. <laughs> no? So, guys, if you wanna get something like this, you have a possibility to go to this Schmürgjürg. What is his name? Uh, Zürstrüm <laughs> audio. Zürstrüm, to this Zürstrüm website and order from the guy this uh, PCB panel and all the, all the parts from the Mosel electronics or uh, whatever or from the RS components and then uh, build it for yourself. I'm telling you guys this is unbelievable for 110 euro this is absolutely nothing and uh, yeah but if you want to go to the high-end world uh, yeah 400 euro or something like this for this puppy um, I will stay with that, so I will build from that a balanced input, balanced output, plus switchable balanced input, balanced output, and uh, with uh, some kind of really nice uh, volume uh, controller, because I need a volume controller on that. This Texas Instruments chip is unbelievable and it can outbeat the high-end gear. So guys, if, 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 if you want to build something, on DIY, good headphone amplifier, I mean really good, really precise, uh, this is the way. Or ask my friend, he will build for you, <laughs> of course not for 110 because he has to also to work on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this short video, <laughs> again this short video, so catch you next time, bye. Phone before you answer